Welcome to all of our Awake Ministries families for our online worship service for this Sunday, September 20th, 2020. Let us begin our worship together with a word of prayer, and leading us in prayer today will be Hong Songi Chipsanim. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for protecting us during this week and leading us to this Sabbath. Although we cannot physically gather now, please let us be filled with the Holy Spirit and grace through this online worship service. However, we sin by the temptations of the word. We could not rely on you, and sometimes we fell easily. Please forgive our weakness, and please give mercy on this generation who are suffering from pandemic. Protect this country from spiritual enemies and lead the president to seek God's will first and overcome the crisis wisely. I pray for the ministry of Myeongsong Church. Let this ministry proclaim only Lord and reveal that you alone are our strength and power. Please give wisdom and biblical power to the senior pastor and the pastor emeritus. Especially lead the senior pastor to become a spiritual leader of this dark generation. I pray for Awake Ministries. I pray that this service becomes a channel for people who do not know Jesus and recover the members who are suffering from physical illness and those who are suffering financially and mentally. Now, when Pastor Joseph Kim proclaims the word of God, Please give him spiritual strength and let us understand your word. We believe that you will receive this service with pleasure. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, a special praise from our Tehila worship team. Let us join together in worship.
Thank you very much to our Tehillah worship team for that beautiful and wonderful worship. And now let us read together from the scriptures. Our reading for today comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Hear now the word of the Lord. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oils in their jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go and go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on the way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before we get into today's sermon... We will have another special praise from our uh, former Shoshana member, uh, Ijuan, who will be playing the vi viola for us. And this is our first time seeing her after she came back from Germany. So let us open her with uh, very warm hearts. Let us welcome her with very warm heart. Thank you very much to our sister Chuan Li for that very special and uh, beautiful praise. 
This past week was a very important time for Apple users. The company held their annual September event. This is a very, very big event that they do every single year in September. And at this September event, they always announce new products. And many Apple users, many Apple fans had been expecting, they had been waiting, they had been anticipating for the newest iPhone to be unveiled at this big event, the iPhone 12. This new iPhone is very, very highly anticipated. It is being touted as a generational upgrade over the previous phones. I myself, using an iPhone 8, am also waiting to skip ahead four generations. I'm waiting. But of course, this being the year of the coronavirus, we were once again disappointed. Disappointed to find out that there will be no phone announced at this event. The event came and went with no phone. And now there is news that the phone may be released later, maybe sometime in October. But the way that the year 2020 is going, I don't want to get my hopes up about anything. Who knows when this phone will come? We never know anymore. Sometimes we wait and we hope and we expect and we eagerly anticipate for something that seems like it is so close, only to be told, not yet, not now. If we look at the 10 virgins, the 10 bride, uh, bridesmaids in today's reading, they found themselves in a very similar situation. They had been waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. But the bridegroom was a long time in coming. He was delayed. Who knows why? Of course, being his wedding, he can't be late to his own wedding, right? It starts whenever he arrives. So they needed to wait. Even though he was a long time in coming, they continued to wait for the bridegroom to arrive. But in doing so, it says that they all became drowsy and they fell asleep. It almost seemed like he would never come. Who knew if he would come? Maybe it was the wrong day. Perhaps today was not the day. Maybe they had been given the wrong information. Maybe they were waiting for the wrong person. And so one by one, these young women, they let their guard down. They let their defenses down. Their tension was down. And one by one, they nodded off to sleep, so tired as they waited and waited. But suddenly, a cry rang out, piercing through the darkness of the night. At midnight, it says, He is here. He has arrived. The bridegroom is finally here. Ready your lamps. Come out and meet him. And it says that the ten virgins, startled out of their sleep, alarmed by the groom's sudden arrival, made preparations. Although they had been expecting him, they had not been expecting him. And so these 10 young women, these bridesmaids, they were the bridal party. When the groom appeared, it was their responsibility to escort him, to go with him, to light the way before him, to go to his waiting bride. And only then could the wedding feast begin. You know, I still remember at my wedding, one of my groomsmen came pretty late. He came pretty late. He didn't come late, as in he came after the wedding began. But being a, uh, one of the groomsmen, you know, you have to be there early. So he came very late. I still remember he came in about 30 minutes before the wedding ceremony began. We had all been looking for him, trying to call him. And this is back when cell phones weren't that good. And we were all looking for him. And he just walks in with the tuxedo on the hanger like, hey, where do I go and change? Whenever I see him, even to this day, I remind him how he almost ruined my wedding. I say it with a, a loving and forgiving heart, of course. But I do remind him, hey, you know, you almost ruined my wedding that day. If you are part of the bridal party, if you are part of the bridal party, it is important for you 
to do your job. You must be ready. You must be prepared. Any of you that have been married, that have gotten married, or any of you that have been part of a bridal party, right? What they call tullari here. If you have been a part of this process, you know how important this is for the bridal party to be ready and prepared to do their duty because they are not the stars of the show. They are there to help, to facilitate, to help the process through. For these 10 young women, the entire ceremony could be thrown off if they were not ready. Their job was to be ready for the groom, for his arrival. And their duty, a large part of their duty, was to have their lamps ready to light the way in the dark, to shine a light along the path. But as we have read here, it says that only five of them brought sufficient oil for their lamps, while the other five did not. Now, it says that five of them were foolish and five were wise, but it doesn't say that five were smart and five were dumb. This was not a matter of them not having the intellect to prepare. Obviously, they all had oil in their lamps when they set out, when they first came out to wait for the bridegroom. But the five foolish bridesmaids did not bring any extra oil to last through the long night. They thought that the bridegroom would appear immediately. They did not prepare for what was ahead, for the long endurance trial that was ahead of them. Meanwhile, the five wise ones, the reason that they were wise is because they brought additional oil. They brought additional stores with them to ensure that their lamps would stay as long as they needed. That if the bridegroom was delayed in coming, if there was any problem, that they would have enough oil to get through the night. The long, long night. See, the five women who brought oil with them, they knew that they themselves had to be prepared. They themselves had to be prepared. Not someone else. Me. I have to be prepared. But the five who did not, the five who were foolish, they assumed that someone else would take care of this. They assumed that someone else would be there to help them. I can always ask, someone else. I can always ask my neighbor. I can always ask her over there for their oil. But it says when the groom appeared at midnight, while they were least expecting him, while they had all fallen asleep, it was only then they realized their mistake. That they did not prepare enough oil. They had no oil and there was no one there to lend them any. And it says they scrambled to find provisions. They even went to try and go buy more, but it was already too late. They were shut out of the wedding banquet. And they knocked on the door and they said, Lord, Lord. But as Jesus said, not everyone who calls on me, Lord, Lord, is known by me. I can always ask someone else for oil. That was the mentality of the five foolish women. But the truth is, when it comes to our faith, we cannot ask others for their oil. When it comes to that final moment, we cannot ask anyone else for help. We may get the wrong idea that someone else will keep our spot in the line while we go and get more oil and come back. That someone else will keep our seat warm. That they'll let us in when the doors are about to open. That they'll call our number when it is our turn. But what today's passage is telling us is that we will be completely wrong to think that. Faith is personal, and it is our own. Therefore, we must be personally responsible for our own faith. You must be personally responsible for your own faith. It is not anyone else's responsibility. Now, don't get me wrong. Many of us are here today. The reason that we are worshiping here today is because there have been people of faith in our lives to guide us 
and to bless us, to stand alongside us. Maybe it was one of your parents. Maybe it was both of them. Maybe it was a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle, whoever it might have been. Maybe a friend asked you to come to church one Sunday many, many years ago, and that began your faith journey. Maybe there was a youth pastor at your church. Maybe there was a VBS that you attended one year. Maybe there was a student leader in your school that was a Christian that helped you along the way. And it is a blessing for us to have these people along the way to help us in our faith. To have these people in our lives is a blessing. Their prayers, their words of encouragement, their acts of love, their displays of faith have a huge influence on us. Yes, we must admit that. But their faith is not ours. Their faith can never be ours. In the end, at the most basic level of Christian faith, their faith does nothing for us. It is only my faith that matters. Their faith can open the door. Their faith can set the path before us, but it can't bring us through that door. It can't take us down that path all the way. We have to step through that door ourselves for us to have our own personal faith. And for myself growing up as a PK, as a pastor's kid, and of course my father being the senior pastor, it was a very difficult thing for me to come to grips with. Because people had expectations of me. They had expectations of my faith based on who my father was. And there was a time in my life where I can say, you know, looking back, I can say that faith meant nothing to me. Now, this is in the past tense, of course, past tense. But there was a time in my life where faith meant nothing to me. I did not care. Because I had not experienced it for myself. It did not matter who my father was. It did not matter who my mother was or who my uncles were, who my aunts were. None of that mattered. Unless I had a personal faith. I had to struggle and stumble on my own. I had to realize and repent of my own sins on my own before I could truly call myself a Christian. Although the faith of others was surely a great blessing and a great support to me, I could not substitute their faith for my own. I had to experience faith for myself. You know, coming here to Myungsung Church and to Awake Ministries, one of the things that has been so encouraging to me is to see these multi-generational families of faith here at our church, to see these generations of Christian believers that are so devoted. The father may be an elder or uh, ordained deacon. He may be the head of a department. He may be the head of a men's ministry. The mother might volunteer in many places. She might be a cell leader, a kwonsanim. But I see that the children are also expressing and living out their own lives of faith. And I know many examples like this even in our ministry. Because when it comes to faith, we must stand for ourselves. No one can stand on our behalf. Only Jesus Christ can stand on our behalf. But our relationship to Jesus Christ must be on our own. We must stand for ourselves. We must prepare our own oil. No one else can do that for us. I encourage all of you watching and worshiping today, prepare your own oil. Prepare your own oil. And think to yourself, have I been preparing my own oil or have I been depending on someone else to do it for me? Prepare your own oil. Be alert. Light your lamps. 
For we do not know when the Lord will return. It might be today. It might be tomorrow. It may be a hundred or even a thousand thousand tomorrows. We don't know. But we must be awake. We must stand ready. We must be prepared. So again, ask yourself this question. Have I been preparing my own oil? Have I been preparing my own oil? Or have you been depending on the preparations of others? Or maybe even you've been preparing oil for others and not preparing your own. You must prepare your own oil. I read about a very interesting trend nowadays. We know that the pandemic is still affecting the entire world. And one of the industries that has been the most negatively affected has been airlines. And so these airlines have begun offering a different kind of flight. I saw that one airline in Australia was offering a one-way ticket. A one-way ticket. And this one-way ticket would take you from Sydney, Australia, to Sydney, Australia. It was a one-way ticket that doesn't go anywhere. The flight itself lasts seven hours. Seven hours. And you wonder, why would it take seven hours to go from Sydney to Sydney? Because instead of the destination, this ticket is all about the journey, they say. It's a sightseeing flight that goes all around Australia. It starts from Sydney at the harbor and the opera house. It goes to the outback. It goes over the Great Barrier Reef. It does a complete loop around the entire country in seven hours before returning back to where it started in Sydney. And they are calling this new kind of plane ticket the trip to nowhere. The trip to nowhere. And the most amazing thing is that I heard the tickets were sold out in under 10 minutes. I guess people really, really want to get out of the house. But it truly is a trip to nowhere. You pack a bag, you go to the airport, you get through ticketing and you go through security and then you wait at the gate. Maybe you go shopping in duty free and eat a little snack before getting on the flight. And then you get on and go through the video and you put on your seatbelt and all of this. You go through all of the motions and all of the appearances of going somewhere. But in fact, you are not going anywhere. I hope that all of us on our own faith journey, that our faith journey would not be a trip to nowhere. Appearing to be moving forward, when in fact we are just going in a big circle and starting exactly at the same place that we began, not going any place at all. Let us be careful that we are not walking around with lamps that appear ready when in fact they are empty of oil and therefore useless when the time comes. We must note that in this story, all ten of the bridesmaids had fallen asleep. It's not that the five wise ones remained asleep. They fell asleep too. Even the wise ones fell asleep. It was a long night. So it's not that five of these young women were perfect without blame. No, they had blame as well. But at just the right time, remember we spoke about this, at just the right time, at just the right time, they woke up and quickly moved into action to receive the arriving room. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Even though in the past we may have fallen asleep. Even though in the past we may not have readied our lamps the way that we should have. We might not have oil in our lamps as we should have. We still have time today to wake up. To trim our lamps. To go out and meet the bridegroom. To make ready. To make provision. 
So I hope and I pray that all of us gathered in worship here today, that we would commit ourselves, or maybe we would recommit ourselves to ready our lamps, to ready our own oil, so that when the day comes, we will be ready to go out and meet the Lord. Let us be found ready. Let us be found awake on that day so that we may join in the festivities, that we may join in the banquet that God has prepared for us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you have sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Bridegroom, O Lord, to take us in the heavenly procession. On that final day, O Lord, we know that you have prepared a beautiful feast, a banquet on our behalf. We know, O Lord, that you have prepared many rooms for us. Let us be ready. Let us be awake. Let us be alert on that day, O Lord. We thank you and we pray all of this together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements before we conclude our service. Our uh, in-person services are gradually reopening in phases. Uh, it is still not completely open, uh, but starting this Sunday uh, for every service from 1 through 5 in the Korean services, uh, limited amounts of attendees will be allowed to join and those will be contacted uh, directly. So I understand that everyone wants to get back and worship in the sanctuary as soon as possible. But uh, please wait until you have been contacted or wait until uh, it has reopened further. Uh, for this Sunday, it is only those who have been contacted directly will be allowed to join in groups of less than 50 uh, per space. So please keep that in mind. And please continue praying for our Pastor Emeritus and our senior pastor as they provide leadership through this uh, pandemic. And pray also for our nation's leadership as they lead us uh, through this time. And let us pray also for all of our church elders, all of our church volunteers and members, uh, especially of our Awake Ministries as they are going through this time as well. Now let us conclude today's service with the benediction. And we pray, Lord, now that the everlasting grace of our coming bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of the Almighty Father, God, who has prepared a bountiful banquet on our behalf, and the presence of the Holy Spirit that lives in our hearts as the oil in our lamps, be with the members of our Awake Ministries and Myeongsong Church, now and forever. Amen.